Hello, here's a follow-up from the RGB strip lights that I was working on in a previous video. This is a close-up of one of those RGB uh, integrated uh, circuits that's mounted on the strip. Um, the strips usually have 30 to 100 of them. Um, the diameter of this circle that you see here is about four millimeters across. I have a USB microscope plugged in to give us a zoomed in view. So these six contact pads that are silver are really, that's all they are, they're contact pads for wires to be connected for essentially each LED to have its cathode and anode. The LED itself, the light emitting diode part, is this little circular region um, on each. And that circular region, depending on the color, is a special um, recipe of semiconductors that are quote, doped, meaning have little impurities from other elements mixed in. It's a layer of what we call an n-type and a p-type semiconductor. The n-types like to take electrons and the p-types like to give up electrons, kind of. Um, and that's what makes um, an LED. So a diode is really, any diode is a sandwich of an n-type and a p-type semiconductor. Um, a light emitting diode is one that when current passes through it, it will give off light. So I can turn this on and I can show you where the light is coming from for each of the individual um, light emitters on this uh, little tiny LED uh, strip. Um, again, this is just four millimeters across. So the actual LED itself is less than a millimeter. Um, the first one, the red, uh, you can see it's just coming from this little circular region here. Um, it is typically the dimmest, um, a couple reasons for that. Uh, it also has to do with how well our eyes perceive it and how well the, the camera sensor is perceiving it. Red LEDs were the, the first LEDs that were actually brought to mass market. Um, the red LED was originally invented. I got this page. I'll put the link to this in the uh, comments for this video. Um, by this guy, Nick Holonyak. He was working, um, I forget which company he was working for, it'll say right down here, Nick Holonyak, he was working for General Electric. And he found that gallium, arsenic, and phosphorus, if you mix gallium and had little bits of arsenic and phosphorus to form gallium arsenide phosphide, you could make um, a a, a diode that would emit visible light. So the red LED is actually the first visible light LED, 1962. It was very dim. Um, it didn't quite take off to replace things like indicator lights immediately. Um, 10 minutes later, or not 10 minutes later, sorry, 10 years later, um, this guy, uh, George Crayford, um, at Monsanto, uh, created an yellow LED using the same kind of recipe, just different amounts. He also made a brighter red LED. So I can go back to our um, camera and I can go to the green one. The green LED is, it's kind of a mix of yellow and red. It's actually taking an infrared LED and that infrared LED is then um, surged in a special way that um, doubles the frequency and halves the wavelength. So first came red, and that's the basis for a lot of uh, portable red lasers. Like without a red LED, you wouldn't have barcode scanners. Um, you wouldn't have optical disk drives either, things like CD-ROM or audio CDs. And then came green LEDs. These were really brought to mass market in the, um, the mid-80s. And after those are brought to mass market, you could get green laser pointers, but you can also get green lasers for optical disk drives which meant you could um, shrink the data on a disk. And that meant the amount of data that, and by shrink the data, I mean shrink the physical size of the data. The actual data hole would be much smaller. And so you could put more data on a disk. And so that, what followed were DVDs because you could then store far more data, video data, in addition to audio data. Um, the most significant for the LED world, however, is in 1979 in Japan, Shuji Nakamura created a blue LED using nitrogen and gallium, gallium nitride. The originals weren't um, very reliable or 
they weren't cheap to make. But by 1990s, they definitely uh, dropped in the cost to produce them, and they started to pop up everywhere. So blue LEDs and anything from indicator lights, but also in things like optical disk drives. Um, the blue LED was so important that the 2014 Nobel Prize was awarded um, to these guys for creating the, the blue LED. Um, go back to the, the camera here and I'll show you the blue. Blue LEDs tend to appear to our eyes a lot brighter uh, than the red or the green. But the, the real trick um, is when you combine the blue, the green, and the red, and you turn them all on together, is you create white. And so you can make white LED illumination. And this is far more cost efficient than incandescent lighting, and it lasts a lot longer. So it wasn't until we had blue LEDs that we were able to truly start replacing all of our ambient illumination with LED lighting. Um, the other thing was blue LEDs are put into optical disks, uh, optical disk drives, and you could shrink down the physical size of the data even more. And so um, two standards came out of that. Um, about 20 years ago, there was HD DVD, and then there was Blu-ray. Um, and the companies that backed each fought about which one should be the, the worldwide standard. And then there was a company called Netflix that had realized, oh, we don't even need to send discs anymore to people. We can just stream the information. So Blu-ray came and went. And the whole optical disc technology is a, is a data storage technology that has had its time. And computers and not produced with uh, disk drives anymore. Uh, they are hard to find. Because why put in a mechanical thing that's going to fail if you can just stream anything? Um, other notes here. We can combine color. So if I combine red and green, I get yellow. If I combine green and blue, I get cyan. And if I combine blue and red, I get magenta. And if I combine all of them, I get white. Um, I want to turn this off, or actually turn this all off for a second. I'm going to zoom in a little bit further on this. I can bring us a little closer with my USB microscope here. Ah, oh, that's really close. And let's see if we can look at one of those LED emitters. I this is the blue one. So here's what this is going to look like right there. And so there's, again, we're looking at something that is less than a millimeter across. The whole span of this image is probably two millimeters, uh, the full circle being four millimeters total. Um, so LEDs, they are amazing technologies. They are getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And they have really changed a lot of what's possible in terms of bringing light to certain places um, and long lasting light. Because you, once you have some LEDs uh, in place, the idea of replacing them is, is you don't. They should last a very, very long time, much longer than incandescent bulbs. So the blue LED, I think it was appropriate that it was awarded with the Nobel Prize in Physics because that was the, the last in the, the three necessary colors to make LED lighting a practical technology.